Okay, um, we're going to go through three stoichiometry practice problems to review the concepts. It'll also help you do the assignment that's labeled CHM 130 uh, on Google Classroom. Okay, so first up, uh, we have uh, the three steps that we go through um, when we're solving a stoichiometry problem. And remember that the first one is to get moles, meaning if you have uh, something given to you in grams or liters or molecules or atoms, you need to convert that to moles first, okay? Second step is to use the equation, meaning use the ratios in the balanced chemical equation to do the second step. And we'll go through this as we look at the practice. And then third step is to get what you want, meaning convert it back into the units that they're asking for. Okay, now with stoichiometry problems, there is a definite pattern to how these things work. If you're given a question that gives you a given amount in moles, like they say you have two moles of such and such, and they're asking for moles, for instance, if you have two moles of this, how many moles of this will we get? It's a one-step problem, okay? If it's moles to grams, liters, or particles, any of those three, it's gonna be two steps. Also, if you're going from grams to moles back the other way, um, it's also going to be, you know, two steps. So I put the double arrows here just to show you guys that, you know, um, either way, going from moles to grams or grams to moles, you're going to need two steps. Okay. That means you got to multiply twice. Okay. Um, if you're going from grams to grams or grams to liters or particles to liters, any of those three to any of those three, uh, you're going to have three steps involved on those so just keep that in mind as you guys are going through the problems okay and we'll i'll review it with you as we do them again okay we're going to look at our first practice problem so um here we have sodium which is shown here with na and we've got sodium plus water makes sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas okay now the question is asking about hydrogen gas okay and it's asking about sodium so we've got sodium we've got hydrogen gas we do not care about those guys for this question okay so it says how many liters of that gas will we get if the sodium weighs two grams at stp okay now if you want to try these out as you're going through this video then go ahead and pause the video try it and then we'll check it. So go ahead and pause it if you're gonna work on the problem. Okay, and I really suggest that in this one. And then we'll come back and look at it. Okay, so here is the setup for this question. Now, step one, get moles, is right here. Okay, so we have our two grams of sodium, that's the given amount that we see there, and we gotta get it into moles first, okay? Uh, the 23 grams, remember, is coming from the periodic table, okay? So we put that there. The grams are going to cancel out, and now we're in moles after that step. If we just stopped right now, we'd have one mole of sodium, or we'd have the moles of sodium, okay? But it's not asking about that. So second step is shown here. Step two is to use the equation, and remember the two and the one are coming from here and the one that's not written in front of the H2, okay? So one mole of H2 to two moles of Na, sodium. And that, remember, is the switchover point because you notice we're in sodium all the way to this point. And in the second step, it switches over to hydrogen gas. So that's where I make the changeover. Remember, it's a lot like, like a language translation, okay? Um, when you're trying to translate something like money, um, for instance, if we go from dollars to pesos down in Mexico, there's a translate or there's a, uh, you know, there's a conversion factor, like it's 13 pesos to $1. So that's, this is where we're making that, that conversion to H2 from NA. Okay. Step three is to get what you want. And this question is, is asking how many liters now the 22.4, I see words like STP standard temperature and pressure and at STP one mole of any gas, no matter what it is, remember is 22.4 liters. Okay, so that's that's the reason for the 22.4 there. Uh, in your calculators, you multiply all the top numbers. So it would be two times 22.4. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna show you an easy way, divide, 
put 23, hit divide again, we're going to put that 2, and then I hit equal. I leave all the 1s out, obviously, and we end up with 1.94 liters of H2 gas at STP. Okay, for this question, it's a limiting reactant problem. So we have two reactants given in this question instead of just one. So something's not in excess. We don't know what's in excess and we don't know what's limiting yet. But we care about the Na and the water. And then it's asking how many grams of sodium hydroxide. So we care about that. The thing that's not mentioned in this problem is the H2. So I'm going to ignore it. Okay. Now, if you're going to work this problem at home, go ahead and pause the video again. Uh, work out the problem with your calculator and some paper and then uh, hit play when you're ready to go over it. Okay, so in the first part, we have uh, 10 grams of sodium, and I went ahead and just, just chose that as the first one to do. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, we have 23 grams of sodium there, so in step one, that 23 is coming from the periodic table, and again, we wanna get that into moles, which we're doing in that first step. The second step, we're using the equation ratios. We have a two and a two there. And again, that's coming from two moles of sodium for every two moles of sodium hydroxide in the equation, okay? Um, and then the last step is to get what you want, which is grams of sodium hydroxide. Remember that was mentioned up here in the question. And the 40 grams is coming from adding up one Na, one O, and one H, and you get an answer of 17.4 grams of sodium hydroxide if we are just looking at the sodium, okay? For the second part, we have the 10 grams of water doing the same thing, get moles. The 18 grams is coming from the periodic table masses, 2H is 1O. Um, this one has the same ratios in it because you have two moles of H2O for every two moles of sodium hydroxide. So the use the equation portion looks the same as the other one. And again, this is also going to look the same because we're trying to get the same thing, grams of sodium hydroxide. So that 40 is going to be the same. Now you notice this one makes 22 grams of sodium hydroxide. So to answer the question, how many can be produced, it's got to be the lesser of the two because you're going to run out of one of these guys uh, before the other. And the one that makes it less is the one you're going to run out of. So in this case, sodium is the limiting reactant because it can only make 17.4 grams of sodium hydroxide and the HTO, H2O sorry, would be the excess reactant. The answer to the question is going to be 17.4 grams. That is the most we can get out of this because once we hit that amount of sodium hydroxide, we're out of sodium and all that's left in there is water and sodium hydroxide. Okay, last practice question here, and this covers another uh, type of question you get with stoichiometry. Um, this one says, consider your answer from practice number two, which again was 17.4 grams of NaOH that could be produced. It says a teacher performs the reaction above, throwing sodium in water, and it produces only 15.2 grams of sodium hydroxide. What is the percent yield? Uh, remember that percent yield is the amount that uh, is actually produced over the amount that could theoretically be produced. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, give it a shot, see what you get, and then we'll come back and look at the solution. Okay, so I took and put in, we have um, our 15.2 grams is what's actually produced in an experiment. So that goes on the top, okay? Then we have our 17.4 grams. That is what's theoretically possible, and that's gonna go on the bottom. And then remember, divide those guys times 100, and we got an 87.4% yield from that problem. So percent yield is all about gauging how well did the reaction go like in reality what happened because I mean 17.4 is what we could get but we got 15.2 because reactions do not progress 
uh, in the most efficient way sometimes, and some reactions are, are better than others at doing that. And in this case, we got a yield that was that was not bad, um, but we don't know if it's good or bad for this reaction. We have to look at further data on that. So um, that's just a quick uh, stoichiometry review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, try these out. Uh, work on the stuff that I'm posting in Google Classroom for you and uh, ask me questions on Remind or email me. Okay, hang in there.